In this video, you will learn how to work with properties and events in Angular. Hi, I am Alexander Kocherhin from Monster Lessons Academy, where I am teaching you how to become a programmer or improve your skills of being a programmer in learning by doing way. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will link all links that I am mentioning in the description box below. And just to remind you, this video is the part of the free series Angular for Beginners. So let's jump right into it. In previous video, we successfully rendered a list of users in our component users list. So here is the rendering information from our component, but of course we want to implement more. For example, would be nice to implement a possibility of removing these users. So let's do it now. First of all, we want for each user here on the right to add a button, remove, and then when we click on it, we will remove this user from the array. So how we can do it? First of all, we need to add button here. So let's say it will be span and not a button, because it will just look better. And here will be text remove. And now we need to add an event remove for this span. And this is how it looks like. So here we have click and here will be remove user, where we are passing user.id. So this is exactly how we are attaching events in Angular to our DOM elements. So you can see here that we have round brackets. And when you see round brackets, it means that this is an event. So in this case, in round brackets, we have click, which means this is a click event. This is like the most popular event that we are using. And then in the value, we have a function that will be called from our TypeScript file when we click on our remove button. What is interesting here, you might think that these round brackets here mean that uh, this function will be called instantly when we will load our template. Because normally when we are writing in JavaScript round brackets, it means calling the function directly. But it's not the case with the events. Here we just specify our function and an argument, but this function will be called later when we will de do the click. And in this case here we are passing user.id. And why is that? Because if we will check our array here in component, you can see that our ID always are unique. And this is exactly the case. Normally all our data are unique by some ID, because we are working with entities from database. And in this case we can safely pass here user ID because it's unique, and then we can remove the user by ID. So this is exactly how we are binding by events in DOM elements. Now we just need to create remove user function inside our component. So let's jump inside component and then remove user function and here will be some TypeScript. So basically as we said we get here an ID and this ID is a string and here we will get back void. So as you can see, it's not JavaScript, it's TypeScript. This is why you have some new things. And actually, it's not that difficult. Normally, as an argument of some function, we have a parameter. In this case, we have the parameter ID, but in TypeScript, we can specify what the type of data is this parameter. And we just put here colon and then string, and it means that our type will always be string. Now here we have a colon and then void, and this is what the function is returning. So in our case void means that we don't expect that this function is returning something, because we simply want to remove data here from the array, and we don't want to return any information inside this function. Now we just want here to check if it's working at all. So let's console log here remove user and ID, and let's look in the browser. So here we have remove button, when we click on it, we have in the console remove user and ID. And here we click once again remove user 3. This means that our function is working completely fine, and now we just need to write logic to remove the user by ID from the array. And we can simply write here these users, and here will be these users filter, and we want here to filter our users to remove this ID, which means here we are getting our user, 
And here we can write user ID doesn't equal ID. And let's just save it. And as you can see here, when we will check our code, we click remove and this item is removed. So what we are doing here is the simple filter from plain JavaScript. And as a filter, we are getting here a function. And this user is each user inside our array. So this is an object. And then we return here a predicate. And as a predicate, we want to check if user ID, which we are checking, for example, here is check ID 1, if this ID equals the ID from our function, from the parameter. And if it equals, then we recheck this item. And then the result of this filter, we just simply reassign in this users completely. This is just plain JavaScript, nothing more. And console log we don't need anymore. So let's try once again, we click remove, 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 and everything is working fine. And this is exactly how events are working in Angular. So we just need here to attach an event to some function, pass some arguments if we need, and then write this function to do something with data inside our component. Now let's check something more difficult. So we can remove users from the array, but we also want to create new users here. And of course, to create the user, we need an input and a button. So let's create now first the input and let's remove this users list div because we don't need it anymore. And right here, input, just type text. And after this, a button. And inside button will be text add user. So for now, it's just plain HTML. So here is input and add user button. Now we want to attach to our button a function, exactly like we did previously. So here will be click event, and we want here add user with round brackets. And as you can see here, we don't pass any information inside, because basically we don't have this information here yet. And now we have input and we can use it and type something. But this data doesn't go anywhere. So what we want to do here is to have one more event. And this is change event. Every time when we will change this input, the function will be called. And the question is, what is change? Actually, change is not something like key up or key down. It's when we are making on blur, which means when we are leaving this input, for example, with tab, or if we just click outside. So let's on change, just set the value of this input. So how we can do it? Let's name it set new user name. And here will be dollar $event and then target value. And let's first create this set new user name to check that it is working. And then I will tell you how it is working at all and what is all this code. So let's open here our HTML and our component. First of all, we need a function set new user name and we are getting here value or user name and it is string, and back we are getting void. And let's just console log here, set new username, and this is user name. And now we need one more uh, function when we click on the button. This is add user function, and we don't have any arguments. And we also just want to console log here, add user. This is it. So for now, we just assume that inside this function, we get as an argument username and it is string. So let's check this. When we click add user, we simply are inside add user function and we don't do anything. This part is clear. It is not clear with the input, we are typing something, nothing is happening. Then we just click something outside and then we are getting this console log set new username and then the value. So basically, as you can understand, change is when we are leaving the input. This is completely fine for us. And this is the calling of the function. It is also clear. Now the question is also, what is this at all? And Angular provides for us a possibility to use the event of the DOM element directly in template.
which means if this is an input, we have here access to dollar $event. And this dollar $event is something that Angular is giving us. And exactly dollar $event is the standard event. If you will just uh, bind to DOM element input in plain JavaScript, you will get as an argument of the callback event. And we can pass it in directly in this function, for example. And in this case, we don't want to get the whole event, but the value from the target, because this is exactly the text that we are writing here. So the idea is that we wrote some text here, and then we clicked outside, and then inside set new username function, we can save the value of this input. And then when we click add user, we can use this uh, variable and then create this new user. So let's try to do it now. First of all, we need inside our component to create new variable where we will save this new username. So let's create it directly now here, new username, and we are saying that this is a string. And by default, the value will be empty string. So this is exactly how we create variables in TypeScript. Normally in JavaScript, it will look like this, so without string we simply save the default property with empty string. This is that we are saying directly that this is string. This is not mandatory, but it really is nice for understanding what we are writing at all. And now here in our set new username, we just want to save inside this new username property username that we got from our input. And console log we don't need anymore. And now in add user, we have access to this new username. So let's check. We just simply type something, we click add user, and as you can see here, we get the value from our input. So this is exactly what we wanted. Now we want to generate somehow the user that we will paste inside our array. So how we want to generate it? The most difficult part is that ID should be unique. So we can't simply take ID like the length of the array plus one, because it is possible that we remove, for example, the item with ID two, and then we just have not correct IDs and we have duplicates. And we can use simply a random function from JavaScript. We can write math random. And as you can see, it will be this number. And then we can make simply to string 16. And then as you can see, we are getting some random string. So let's use this function to generate our unique ID for our new user. So for this, I will just write a const variable and it will be unique ID and just paste math random to string 16. So we got here unique ID and we can create our new user. And new user consists of three properties. First of all, ID, it is unique ID. Second is name and name is this new user name because we saved it. And third is age. We don't have age yet and it will be actually your homework. So I will just put here 30 and we can improve it later. So this is our new user. What we need to do here is push inside this and users new data. So just this users push and here is new user. Let's check if it's working. So here we're typing something, we click add user and here we have our new user is 30 years old, which means what we did here. First of all, here in HTML, we have on change event, and when this on change event is happening, we are passing here username from the value and are saving it to our property in this new username. Then when we click on add user, we are using this new username and we generate new unique ID. Then we generate a new object with unique ID and name and age. And then we simply push this data inside these users. This is it. But now actually we have a small bug. So basically when we reload the page and put something in the input and click at user, it will be nice to clean our input because it doesn't make any sense to keep here the value. And what we can do here inside add user at the end is assign this new username to empty string. 
But when we reload the page and put something here once again, it doesn't help because basically this property we are setting in set new username, but this property is not related to input at all. This is just a property and we just set it to empty. This is fine and correct, but our input is not binded to this property. And what we can do is jump inside our HTML and write here with um, square brackets value and here will be new username. And this is new construction, you didn't see it before. Basically with events we are using round brackets. And with property bindings we are using square brackets. In this case we want to pass as a value inside our input new username. And by default it is empty string. And now every time when we change new username the value inside input will be updated. So let's check this out. When we put something here and we click add user, here the value is empty. Why it is happening? Because inside our component we have this line and we assign this property to empty string. And every time when we change this property, this input will be automatically updated. Of course you can use these square brackets not only with value, but with thousands other things. But basically you just need to understand that there are two main things in the templates of Angular. It is events binding and property binding. Events are with round brackets and properties are with square brackets. In this video you learn how to work with events and property bindings in Angular. And if this course is too easy for you, you can always check my advanced course about Angular, which is going 14 hours, where we are building the application from start to the end. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in my next video.